All right, so we've got our Camp In vent cover two pack. There's your part number, Amazon specials. And I'm going to open this up and see if this is something that I'm going to be able to get done while I'm here. Not the sharp, not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Okay, so we got some instructions. One little page. We got our hardware. Is it taped together or what? Vent caps, which feel a lot sturdier, at least at the moment, than the ones that are up on the camper right now. So, what do these instructions say? So, we're gonna have to put the centerpiece with the slot, the key slot in it first, and then the hinge. Screw it all together. And then open it up, unbend something on the hinge outside, pop the old one off and put the new one on and rebend it. Hmm. Shows us some nice little drawings. We got a bunch of little washers. Got the hinge, cross member. So I'm gonna make a little room on this table. I'm gonna start getting these put together. Large round opening must be closest to hinge. Ah, uh, okay, for the key slot. Gotcha. Cool. Well, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we've got the hardware unwrapped and we do have two of the centers, two hinges, and a little bag of hardware, which looks to be Phillips. We got, got my toolbox. And then the vent cover has two sides on it, one with two holes and one with four holes. The hinge goes on the four hole side. The other side holds the other piece of the slotted one. And this can go two ways. From what it looks is if you want this notch to stick out over the back so that the hinge is pretty much flush with the edge. If you flip it around this way, it's not gonna work right. So that's the way you want it. And it does line up with the holes. Very good. Take the little screw. Seems like the washer should go on the outside. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a little tiny hex nuts. some Loctite on them. The factory ones are riveted. But these are actually little tiny hex nuts. Next step is this piece with the round end near the hinge. And it basically lines up too. Eh, hot dog. And we finish it up with the screws on this side. 
Now what I'll say is the fit isn't perfect. I guess it'll suck it up when I tighten it. But the other option is you could tweak this a little bit and bend it out, which I may do. But it's pretty darn close. I got a little bit more square, so I'm not going to be putting stress on the plastic. Or putting less stress on the plastic, let's say. And now we're just going to snug them down. And that looks pretty good. Personally, I would prefer it if these nuts were elastic stop nuts, because um, I think that these could have a tendency to come loose over time with nothing else really to hold them on. But uh, looks pretty good. So now I'm going to assemble the other one, and then we'll go up top and see how hard it is to put them on. Alright, well there's the second one, and invariably, <clears throat> I didn't do this properly the first time, so according to the instructions, the little washers are supposed to go on the inside, and I guess what that does is it helps keep that nut from backing off, but it doesn't really help waterproof it at all, so that's interesting, but uh, anyway, looks good, no real issues, the other thing I can do eventually if I don't like these is I can just rivet it. <laughs> I've got a rivet gun at home and that would completely take care of everything and uh, one other thing these do come with precisely the right amount of hardware screws washers and nuts so there were no extras all right so now it's telling me I got to start working in here so we got to take off the vent cover open it should go. Remove interior garnish. Appear, apparently that means take these four screws out. Which, okay. Holy crap. <laughs> Excuse me for one minute. Take the screw out of the crank handle. Remove the screen. Oh, a couple of little screws on the outside. It doesn't just come down. There we are. Very small screws. Another good reason to have taped up your floor vent. And remove this from the crossbar. keyhole and now we can go up on top and work on the hinge all right so here we are the seal looks good enough and the seal has never been my problem but here 
this little curled up piece of metal right here that's all that stops that thing from spinning out so you basically got to get it to the same diameter as the inside piece and off comes your cover and oh my god is that light that is garbage and now you can see where that slotted end is I should maybe try it on this end yep, yep there it goes you gotta line it up you see the inside of that has that little curly cue gotta kind of line it up so that all lines up and get it in there and then push those babies down and that's it she is on that was fairly painless. It's interesting, this one here is designed with that underneath it, but it doesn't appear to make any difference. You can see all the little tiny rivets, but good enough. Let's go inside, put that back together, and then we'll hit the other one. Off my camper into grass, and it cracked. <laughs> Super thin and garbage. Done. Okay, reverse order. I'm going to put this thing in. This is a little spring piece that goes between the arm and the side. So, gotta get that up through there. And then there it goes. side so I guess that'll get held up by the escutcheon held up well enough by the escutcheon plate.
that's it. There we have it. Opens and closes. Everything's back together. Not bad. So now I'm going to just lather, rinse, repeat with the other side. And we will have replaced them. So not a terribly hard job. I don't think I like the screws. I think I would rather have rivets, and I may do that later. But uh, generally, for 35 bucks or so, get a couple of these, replace it, and now I don't worry about it for another several years. So good enough. Talk to y'all later.